Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue considering the subject of AC theory and we're going to build on previous videos where we've looked at phasor diagrams and how they help us to understand what's happening inside circuits that contain both resistive and inductive elements. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at a more mathematically accurate relationship between the supply or total voltage put onto a circuit and the voltage across the inductor and the voltage across the resistor. Now the example that we've used in previous videos was that of a fluorescent lamp. However, what we're about to do does apply very much to that most common of inductive loads, motors. So a motor is basically just a big coil of copper wire that generates a magnetic field and in some way creates turning motion. So we can represent the kind of two parts of that coil in a drawing such as this. The resistor represents the resistive part of the copper, so the copper will have a certain amount of resistance which we can represent with the resistive symbol. And of course the copper is coiled into a uh, coil and so therefore we can represent the inductive part of a motor with the inductor symbol that we've got here. Now the values that I've shown on the board here were taken from our experiment with the fluorescent lamp because that gives us something to kind of think back to. So you remember when we measured the voltage across the resistor, we got 195 volts. When we measured the voltage across the inductor, we got 125 volts. And yet the total voltage in the circuit was 248 volts. Now we know from very basic circuit theory that the voltages inside a series circuit should add up to give us our total voltage. However, we've tried to change our mindset a little bit now by thinking, well, we don't necessarily add the voltages together, we combine the voltages. And from that information and from the information that we carried out on our AC theory worksheet, in a previous video, we produced this phasor diagram. And we drew that diagram to scale and we saw that the relationship between the resistive voltage, the inductive voltage, and the total voltage could be physically drawn on a board to scale and the values measured. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we can do this a little bit more accurately and see if the relationship between the voltages becomes any better when we calculate it as opposed to measuring it. So let's get started with that. Now in order to understand this, when we look at our phasor diagram, there's a couple of really important things that we just need to bear in mind. We've got our three different voltages all spread out on the board here. And down here, we've got the arrow that represents the current that's flowing into the circuit. So this is the current flowing into the circuit, that current arrow there. And this is the voltage that's being applied to the circuit. Now, I'm making this point here because as this next series of videos kind of develops and unravels, you'll start to see the importance of the fact that the current here and the voltage here have a particular relationship. So you can see that because this is an inductive load, the current going into the circuit is out of phase with the voltage being applied to the circuit. Can you see that there is an angle between them and therefore the current and the voltage are out of phase? Not by 90 degrees because the circuit has some resistance to it, it's not a purely inductive load as we looked at in a previous video. So we can see that the current and the voltage are out of phase with each other by some angle and at the moment we don't know that angle but they are out of phase by some angle. You see there that angle is called theta at this point. We use the Greek letter theta to represent an unknown angle. So what you'll remember when we drew this phasor diagram was that we used uh, dashed lines in order to indicate the relationships between them. So we had a dashed line that went parallel to the resistive voltage and that went across here like this. And we also had a vertical dashed line that was parallel to the inductive voltage and that went up the ways like this. And where those two lines crossed over, we saw that represented the point at which these two voltages combined and we could measure off the total voltage from that circuit. Now what we're going to do in this video is we're going to concentrate on the shape that is buried inside this phasor diagram. So if you look very carefully, you can see that buried inside here, we have got a triangle. And more than just having a triangle, we've actually got a right angled triangle that looks something like that. So you see that triangle there? What we're going to do is we're going to extract that triangle and we're going to use that to see the relationship between the voltages inside the circuit. So we'll bring that up 
and we'll draw it up here, this triangular shape that's kind of hidden inside there. So I'm going to draw it so it looks something like this. I'm going to draw it so it looks something like this. And then just finish off the corners like so. I feel like Bob Ross when I do this stuff. Okay, and we'll just get that line where I rested my hand filled in as well. <clears throat> so if we look at that triangle now, you can see that it bears the same sizes as the triangle that we've got down here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if we look at this, you can see here that this side here represents the resistive voltage, which is equal to uh, 195 volts. So VR is equal to 195 volts. The length of this side, VL, is equal to 125 volts, like that. And we can see from here that this line here, the total voltage is equal to 248 volts, which looks something like that. We've still got a right angle down here in this corner, and we've still got this angle here, which represents the angle theta. So that angle there and that angle there have stayed the same, and that's a really important point. So the angle here actually represents how far out of phase the current and voltage are, inside our fluorescent light circuit. So now we can see that we've got a right angle triangle here. We can start to do some interesting things with this. So one of the things that we can do here is we can start to see the relationships between these three sides. So in a right angle triangle, hopefully remember from our days at school, or if you are still at school, hopefully we've been taught this, that Pythagoras' theorem states that if the sides of this triangle are labelled up as A, B and C, you might see different letters on different sides, then we know from Pythagoras' theorem that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, like that. Now this is a really important theorem for electricians really, really important because it actually relates to the way that these voltages are behaving inside any inductive load, which is really quite amazing when you stop and think about it, that a theorem that was discovered about triangles centuries ago applies really nicely and neatly to a modern day application of electricity. It's absolutely mind blowing. So what we're going to do now is instead of having A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we're going to replace these letters with their corresponding sides. So you can see there that A will become VR squared, and we're going to add that onto B, which becomes VL squared, and then we're going to add that, to, we're going to say that that is equal to VT squared. Okay. Now, generally speaking, we're not always interested in finding VT squared, we're interested in finding VT by itself. So in order to figure out what VT is by itself, what we need to do is square root both sides. Because if we square root this side, then the squaring disappears, it's like it never happened. And we need to square root that side because we must do the same thing to both sides. So let's just pop the VT on this side and we'll say VT is equal to the square root of VR squared plus VL squared. So, We've got our formula there now that relates the different sides of the triangle to each other. So we can put the numbers in. We'll say that VT is equal to the square root of 195 squared plus 125 squared. And what we'll do is we'll put that into our calculators and we'll figure out what that's going to come up as. So we'll bring the calculator up on the screen now. And I'm going to grab my calculator down here. And we can see that if we do the square root of 195 squared plus 125 squared, then the answer to that is going to come out at, on the calculator, we've come out with 231.62. So we've come out with an answer of 231.62 volts. So 231.62 volts, which again, we're not getting exactly the total voltage that we measured over here, and 
we explained the reason for that in a previous video. I don't know if you can remember it, but it's because what we've got here, we've treated this as the lamp of the fluorescent light fitting and the inductive part, the choke of the fluorescent light fitting. And actually, this would also have some additional resistance. So this voltage would not be a vertical line, it would be leaning over this way a little bit. So that's going to change the relationship ever so slightly between those two voltages. However, the principle holds true. The principle is good. We've come out with a reasonable amount of accuracy. We've also got to bear in mind that when we measured these, we were doing them on old analog dials, and so my reading of them might have been slightly off, and that would change things also. But we can see clearly the relationship between these values. We've got 195 squared plus 125 squared. If we square root that, will give us the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle. So that's how the voltages relate to each other mathematically. In a future video, we're going to see how we can now take this triangle and discover even more information from it, including relating this to something that we call impedance. So all that's left to say in this video is, thank you very much for watching.